up on Grady News Source. The big solar eclipse has happened and I'm going to give you a live reaction of what we saw. Plus, how Oconee County Animal Services is helping solve pet and stray animal overpopulation with its humane method of animal sterilization. And a look at this year's International Street Festival that brought cultures from around the world to Athens. All this and more, live at 5. This is Northeast Georgia's only local source for TV news. From the Grady College of the University of Georgia, this is Grady News Source. Welcome to Grady News Source. I'm Emily Wisnowski. It's been a historic day here in Athens as a partial solar eclipse made its way across the skies this afternoon. I'm joined now with Grady News Source reporter Anna Ruth Riggins, who captured the live reactions to all the excitement. Tell us about your thrilling day. Yeah, so it was a perfect day for a solar eclipse. Sunny skies, high of 78. Um, around 1.47 p.m., the moon began to move in front of the sun. And as we saw, only 80% was covered. It was partial, and it peaked around 3.06 p.m. And so here is what some students saw at the eclipse. So this is before the eclipse. I'm expecting, I don't really know, I haven't seen these solar eclipses before. I know it happened like a few years ago. So I'm excited. Um, I've heard it kind of looks like a ring of fire almost. Our professor gave us these little glasses to like look up and you can see um, a little portion of it. Uh, the sun, the solar eclipse is peaking I think. We're only going to get 80%. But right now, I don't know who's, what picture you're going to look at it as. I can't see. It looks like a macaroni noodle, like a really orange macaroni noodle, or like a Cheeto, like a Cheeto puff. And it looks like lava, but it's like a Cheeto puff. And it's pretty cool. It was darker outside earlier, but like now it's, it's, it's a little lighter. So we just hit 305, which was where the eclipse was as far over as it was going to be. So I think it was 80%. Um, so we didn't get total totality here, but it was really fun and the last time we had this was in high school So it was a fun viewing experience with my classmates So as you can see it was so fun to see so many UGA students and faculty out there to enjoy the eclipse I'll be back later in the show to give you your five-day forecast and what to expect if you're headed down to Augusta for the Masters Tournament Thanks Anna Ruth Now a word of caution for parents Procter & Gamble is recalling over 8 million packages of laundry detergent pods manufactured between September 2023 and February of this year. The recall is due to the bags being defective, causing the colorful pack to become accessible to children, creating a serious risk of injury. The Consumer Product Safety Commission urges people to keep the pods out of children's reach and contact the company for a refund and replacement. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention hosted one of its Out of the Darkness campus walks here at the University of Georgia. A participant graciously shared their story with Grady News Source reporter, reporter Sarah Fredrickson. November 18, 2023, at 3.30 in the morning, Wendy Head woke up to news that would change her life forever. He was such a bright light in a dark place. He was the sun in my days and the stars in my nights. He was my hero. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for those between the ages of 10 and 24. Jacob Vallejo was just shy of 25 when he took his own life. Just months after, Jacob's family and friends came out to the Out of Darkness walk decked out in their red Jacob's Hope Dealers shirts, all 60 of them. There are people here that haven't seen in 25 years that wanted to come and support, support us. But support wasn't the only thing Head came to the walk for. Uh, if I can cause one person to think twice about taking that final action, and if I can save one mama from getting that phone call, I've done my job here today. Had was just one of the walkers who shared her story with the crowd of 800, all decked out in beads representing their connection to the cause. Over 50 people gathered on November. One mama from getting that phone call. I've done my job here today. Had was just one of the walkers who shared her story with the crowd of 800, 
all decked out in beads representing their connection to the gods. Like walk chair Abby Cushing, whose own personal journey inspired her to get more involved. The walk itself really motivated me to get the help that I needed two years ago, and I wanted to create the same place um, and same type of energy for the people here today. The walk raised just over $50,000 for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Two miles of walking around the university's campus won't bring back their loved ones, but it does inspire hope for all those who see them. Sarah Fredrickson, Greedy News Source. The turtle trot took place on Sunday morning to honor a UGA student who suddenly passed away over spring break. Grady News Source reporter Jessica Moore tells us more about the event. Over 50 people gathered Sunday morning to run a 3.13 mile race in honor of Berkeley Hainan's sudden passing earlier this semester. He loved to work out and worked at Classic City Cycling. He even ran a marathon after just a few months of training. His passion for running and working out sparked the idea for the race. So we ran together like, oh my gosh, we spent so many hours running together. Like probably two or three times a week we would be together for like four or five hours just running. The race was just over a 5K at 3.13 miles. This was an intentional nod to Berkeley and his birthday, March 13th. They aim to honor Berkeley's life while raising money for the Berkeley Hainan Environmental Fund. As an ecology major, Berkeley was passionate about the environment and worked at the U Garden and in the sustainability office. At the run also had like a compost for the food that they were giving out and we're using like reusable water bottles um, and stuff like that. But that was kind of, it was a way to honor him, but also push people to donate to the environmental fund. The route started out at the UGA chapel and continued through campus by the science buildings and back through the stadium. He was just like the kind of person that as soon as he met someone, like you were instantly his best friend. For Grady News Source, I'm Jessica Moore. Jackson County ranked number two in the state and number four in the nation for incoming investments, according to Smart Asset. The ranking is largely based around the number of new building permits issued, GDP growth, and business growth. Neighboring Barrow County also made the top 10, ranking number five in Georgia. With Jackson County being the fourth fastest growing county in the United States, local residents and businesses are feeling the impact. Grady News Source reporter Molly Langdon tells us more about how the county is adapting. I'm here in the Commerce City Square in Jackson County where you can see there's some traffic going on behind me. And with the rapid population boom that's been happening here, let's speak to some local business owners about how this is not only impacting their business, but also their daily lives in Jackson County. We've seen lots of new people moving into town with the new industries and businesses opening up and new people coming in, they buy new houses, and that means they need new furniture, usually. So we have benefited from that. We have been here on the square in this location for 14 years, and we've experienced the growth gladly, thankfully. Uh, COVID impacted us, of course, but then the growth, real growth started after COVID, really. Jackson County ranked the fourth fastest growing county in the United States for 2023, growing 5.5% since 2022. There are a couple things motivating this growth, but County Manager Gina Roy stressed that the county's proximity to the highway in Gwinnett and the county's three ranked school systems are a really big motivator for new residents. Roy says another notable reason people are making the move is that Jackson County's median home cost is lower than Gwinnett and it gives families more mobility. All three are ranked in the state. All three are outstanding, building new schools, um, educating the children, um, trying to keep up with the growth. So, you know, that combo um, benefit of cost of living plus, plus the education system. Local residents do notice a change to their once small town community. Sanders says residents experienced a tighter knit community previously, and now they don't recognize every face walking in their door or on the sidewalk. Some people are not real happy because it's changing the whole face of the, you know, town with we're not just a small little rural area. We're becoming, you know, busier, more crowded. Giddy up and get ready as the Georgia Rodeo is heading back to Athens this Friday. The event will take place at the Athens Fairgrounds with doors opening at 10 a.m. Tickets cost $74 and must be bought in advance. They will include access to the rodeo, tailgates, and concert with performances from Hardy and Young Gravy. 
After the break, we'll take a closer look into how UGA's Campus Kitchen is solving food insecurity throughout the Athens area. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. You know, a lot of people say, when you're going somewhere, you don't want to look back. But I beg a different. For her to see her father celebrate his graduation, that's the best feeling in the world. I can't lie and say it was easy. But sometimes you just have to stop everything and take it in. I looked at everything in a different light. I realized it started with me going back and getting my high school diploma. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and walk. Campus Kitchen is solving food insecurity in a sustainable way. Grady News Source reporter Abigail Watts shares how student volunteers turn unused grocery store food into meals for Athens residents. At Campus Kitchen, students are taking time out of their day to prepare meals for those in need. We get calls sometimes of just people wanting to be a part of our organization and receive meals from us, and we never really turn down anyone um, if we can take them on. Grindick says a lot of times they get calls from adults calling for their older parents who may not be able to cook for themselves anymore. Dexter Fisher has seen food insecurity as an athens Clark County Commissioner, as well as how various food banks and organizations have helped. There are pockets within our community that provide food, but I think we probably need more. Food insecurity is defined as a household level economic and social condition of limited or uncertain access to adequate food. Fisher says poverty is one of the main underlying causes of food insecurity, but poverty is not what these organizations address. Obviously it doesn't solve food insecurity, but we kind of go by the mantra of any little bit of help um, can go a long way. Grandick says that being able to get a meal in a grocery bag every week alleviates some of the costs of transportation and buying groceries. Here at the U Garden is where Campus Kitchen food is kept. Drivers will come here to pick up the meals that they'll deliver on their routes. And 90% of the food grown at the U Garden will go towards Campus Kitchen food deliveries. The meals are cooked from grocery store donations as well as ingredients grown at the U Garden. Volunteers turn what would otherwise become food waste into meals. They run delivery routes Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Since the summer of 2022, Sneha Nimkar has developed relationships with her meal recipients that she delivers to every Tuesday. I've been doing the same route for that whole time and I absolutely love them. Mildred Huff, who is 97, <laughs> loves to chat when her food is delivered. I just love every last one of you. A lot of these people are not able to afford like groceries every single week or it's just a little bit harder for them to. So I think it really helps out with us giving them something that's also healthy because a lot of the peop a lot of times you can only get like canned foods or like stuff that's not as nutritious. Joyce Allen, one of the meal recipients, particularly appreciates the fresh produce she gets from the U Garden. I like the business as much as I like the food. Abigail Watts for Grady News Source. If you're looking for something to do this evening, the Hugh Hodginson School of Music is hosting the Don Gillespie Memorial Concert tonight. 
Grading News Source reporter Karina Murray is there now, finding out what people can expect and why this concert is so important. Karina, what's going on? Pretty excited. I was able to see I was able to see some of the students coming in with their instruments a little bit earlier. I seen some of the parents coming in. Um, I guess they're getting ready to set up for this event tonight. I was here earlier as they were finishing up dress rehearsals. And again, they seemed pretty excited. I was able to speak with the director and the lecturer here, Brandon Carls, and he says the students have spent a lot of time, you know, getting ready for this event tonight. We started for this concert uh, back in January, and we give usually two concerts a semester. This concert comes as a tribute to Don Galipsy. Galipsy is known for working over 31 years at C.F. Peters, a prestigious international music publishing house where he championed work for the 20th century. He continues to leave his legacy at UGA with his scholarship that supports graduate music students, and students like Yuen Meili are happy to honor him. This concert is like a concert that we think he would want to go to. So we're like doing it in his memory. Attendees can expect music from some of the most famous composers of the 20s and contemporary music in the classical sphere. But Quarrel says tonight has an even special meaning. It's like taking the baton uh, from, you know, uh, from Don who, who supported this his whole life and, and just continuing to, to do that here at UGA. Yeah. While some students like Asila Fodes aren't able to attend the concert, Fodes says it is an experience. The concerts here offer a lot of opportunity for you, see, for you to see a variety of different things. The concert will be tonight at 7.30, so you can head on down here now if you want to hear some music. I was able to talk to the percussionist in the concert tonight, and he says that if you're into music and you like music, they're going to be changing and you know creating some new music tonight, so look forward to it. Thanks, Karina. Coming up after the break, Grady News Source reporter Anna Ruth Riggins joins us once again, bringing us our five-day forecast and more. During high school, I hung with the wrong crowd and I never graduated. I helped Santiago in many different ways, like all fathers do, because he always wanted to go to college. I felt a little embarrassed to come back to school, but eventually, once I came here, I knew that it's for a bigger goal. He was very dedicated, hardworking. He connected with his teachers, he connected with other students. That was one of the key reasons why he was able to keep forging ahead. It was amazing to see him graduate. This was one thing that meant so much to him, and of course, it meant so much to us too. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed. That support is everything. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. I think I'm finally found. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Got a new house. It's looking pretty cool so far. I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. <laughs> Thank you. Study, please. Welcome back. Today it was clear and sunny with the high of 79, which was the perfect way to start off Masters Week. Tonight it'll be partially cloudy with a slight chance of showers and it'll cool off to a low of 48. Today, there, or Tuesday, there's a 30% chance of showers with a high of 74, and that night it'll get down to 59 degrees with a slight chance of showers and then mostly cloudy. Wednesday, it'll be mostly cloudy with a high of near 78, and Wednesday night, there's a 90% chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 63. 
The rain and thunderstorms will continue into Thursday and there's an 80% chance of showers and thunderstorms. So be aware of this weather if you're headed down to Augusta for the Masters. The high will be 76 and that night there's a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms for the, and for the rest of the night it'll be a low of 51. Friday night, there will be clear skies with a high near 70 degrees, perfect way to start the weekend, and will remain clear going into the night with a low around 46. Coming up after the break, Will Hopkins has updates on a very busy sports calendar. People do some pretty cool things in their 40s and 50s. Why should saving for retirement be any different? I mean, they go back to college, learn new instruments, start skateboarding, Okay, maybe that one's not for everybody, but saving for retirement is. With aceyourretirement.org, you can get on track with your retirement savings no matter your age. Just have a three-minute chat with Avo, the friendly digital retirement coach from AARP. You'll get personalized recommendations based on your input that are easy to understand and work with your lifestyle. It's quick, easy, and free. Plus, it's sponsored by AARP, so you know they got your back. Snarly move, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. So wherever you are in your retirement savings journey, head to aceyourretirement.org and start chatting with Avo today. That's aceyourretirement.org. to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org. I'm Will Hopkins with today's sports update. First, we'll take our coverage across the country. I'm Taft Gant here inside State Farm Stadium in Phoenix, Arizona, the site of tonight's men's college basketball national championship between the Purdue Boilermakers and Yukon Huskies. You can catch the game live on TNT, TBS, or True TV. Tip-off is set for 920 Eastern. For Grady News Source, I'm Taft Gant. UConn is looking to become the first team since Florida's identical starting fives of 2006 and 2007 to win back-to-back -back national titles. UConn, however, is looking to do so without three of last year's starters. They've been dominant behind the brilliance of 7-foot, 2-inch center Donovan Klingon, who had 18 points and four blocks in their 14-point win over Alabama on Saturday. Tonight, however, he'll be facing off against even bigger 7-foot, 4-inch Zach Eady, who tallied 20 points and 12 rebounds in Purdue's 13-point win against NC State on Saturday. Purdue is looking to mirror Virginia from 2019 by winning their first title in the year immediately following defeat to a 16 seed. I asked some people who they think will cut down the nets tonight. UConn. Uh, probably Purdue. I think I have UConn winning. UConn. Uh, I think UConn just looks unstoppable right now. I think, uh, I think Edie's going to have a tough matchup with Klingon. Yeah, give me Purdue. Probably UConn because you cannot defeat them. Going back to yesterday's women's championship game, South Carolina completed an undefeated season with their 87-75 win over Iowa. The Masters officially begins on Thursday and will run through Sunday from Augusta National Golf Club. Former UGA golfers in the field are Harris English, Brian Harmon, Russell Henley, Chris Kirk, Sepp Straka, and of course, two-time Masters champ Bubba Watson. The Georgia football team will have its annual G-Day spring game this Saturday from Sanford Stadium at 1 o'clock. That's all the time we have for today's sports. But up next after the break, Grady News Source reporter Lucy Birch dives into music, food, and more at the International Street Festival from this past weekend.
need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. You're home before sunrise. On top of the house, the kids, and our future. The smell of your cooking is our alarm clock. My Shiro's day is never done. So let's start saving a little more now so we can feel prepared for retirement. A free three-minute online chat can give us the personalized tips we need so we can live our lives to the fullest. Visit AsiaRetirement.org. Julie was always a, a voracious reader. She'd carry two novels on an airplane because she'd read one on a three, four-hour ride. And at some point, I began to notice that she would read a page and couldn't remember what she had just read, and she'd have to go back and read it again. I don't remember much these days after I read, but less does for me, and I love it. Hey, world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel, and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back, because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Thousands gathered in downtown Athens Saturday for the 25th annual International Street Festival. Grady News Source reporter Lucy Birch gives us a glimpse into the different cultures. This isn't an ordinary concert, it's the International Street Festival. From dancing to music to art, the festival showcased different countries from around the world, but here in Athens. Today, um, we have all the international organizations from UGA come out and table um, to tell, uh, in order to spread uh, to the rest of the Athens community information about their different um, cultures. And they aren't a small community. I'm here at the International Student Life Building where there are a ton of flags surrounding me. These flags represent the 2,600 international students at UGA. And they also represent 125 countries. A lot of these countries were actually represented at the festival. These strong cultural passions were shown at each table. Professor Ruchi Yang had on traditional outfits and a chopsticks challenge. The Nepalese Association had traditional instruments. The Bangladeshi Student Association brought colorful Rajasthani parasols. At the Ukraine table, they had an egg drawing activity. The tradition is the more that we make, the more peace there will be around the world. The event gave them a place to showcase not only their roots, but also their resilience. In a way, it's a free trip to hundreds of countries without the passport. For Grady News Source, I'm Lucy Birch. That's all for our show. Thank you so much for watching. From everyone here at News Source, we hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. You know, a lot of people say, when you're going somewhere, you don't want to look back. But I beg a different. For her to see her father celebrate his graduation, it's the best feeling in the world. I can't lie and say it was easy. But sometimes you just have to stop everything and take it in. I looked at everything in a different light. And I realized it started with me going back and getting my high school diploma. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. There is a road laid out for me. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> you.
Leading down to the river I am blind but I need not see What do you think? I know this road is there for me If I'm really free Take me down to the river and walk Well, I think this is our last new, I think, I think this is our last news, news show. And what a way, what a way to end it with a solar eclipse. Yeah, yeah, with some historic news. Uh, and so we've got, on Wednesday, we've got a solution show, which is a totally different format. And then we have, I think, is it, do we have another one? I have to look the farewell. Think about your farewell show, the students who do amazing things. I showed you one version. Yeah, but you, you make, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because some of them do reflections and how difficult it was. I showed you that show, which was very helpful to future students just to show them what it takes. But then others do other interesting things. Uh, the only thing we have to run is Taft Sojo because uh, it's going to be ready for the 15th. But that's okay to have a Sojo show, uh, a show, so, Sojo Solution Journalism Package. Uh, yeah, so I, um, I thought we had a very strong producer, very strong anchor, very anchors. Um, a, all of you put in a lot of thought and, and heart and put a lot of work into the final packages that you produced. And uh, we... Uh, I think, um, you know, I think I, at least, I'm really proud of the way it, it turned out. And um, I have very, I mean, I, I just loved everything about everybody's work. We had a lot of live, different kinds of lives outside. We had Karina out uh, in the field. Uh, we also had our weather anchor twice uh, in different pos live positions. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, I want to hear from you. How was it? Um, and how about we start with you, Anna Ruth, because you had the most interesting, historic, uh, and I love the way you did the before, the during, and the after. 
And I also like Will had some interesting sound bites, and the last one really worked well. I was thinking you could have played off the last one where he was saying, why you, you can't, you know. Yeah, yeah, but I, don't, I mean, it was just wonderful what both of you did. But let's hear from you, and, you know, how was that for you to do something quite unusual? Uh, oh, yeah, it was really fun. It was really cool when, we, when I was in here earlier, and there were, like, um, anchors, like, out doing it, too. And I don't know, it was just cool, because I was like, oh, I'm doing that, too. So that kind of was, like, I, I kind of felt professional, anchors I guess. Anchors other, other stations? Yeah, like, we had the TV on in here, and it was, like, oh. the anchors were, like, out in the field. In the like, newsroom. Doing, oh, yeah, yeah you it's saw like, that other broadcasters were yeah, doing the same thing. Yeah, and it was I really see cool what, to see yeah. that, um, just because, like, I was getting to do it, too. Um, but it was really fun. I had a good time. I, I love being creative and like, I, I don't want to just stand up there and talk for a minute or two minutes. And so it's like having so much to work with and incorporate into the show to make it not just me saying what the high and low was going to be every day, um, was really awesome. And, um, it was really cool. Like it's something I'll definitely remember forever because yeah. well, we won't have one of these until 2070. And it's <laughs> dark. I mean, it Unless yeah. you had, you, you can see it through the glasses, but unless you had the glasses on, you really couldn't see uh, the eclipse. Yeah, uh, and I was glad glasses. I got, even though it was really short, I got like a video of it through my glasses, so um, I'm glad that I was able to get that, because um, then it kind of went with what they were all saying. Now so with the funny. next one, when you're in your 70s, yes, you will yeah. be able to... <laughs> Take your grandkids. Exactly. <laughs> I'll, I'll know everything they need to know about the solar eclipse. <laughs> when I was young. Yes. But it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Today was like, besides sports, obviously, today was my favorite thing I've gotten to do, I think, so far. Because we started with some interesting good news and, uh, yeah. Yes, it was nice to do something positive. Yeah. Today felt very positive, which and was really historic. nice. historic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Emily, would you like to share something from your point of view? How was this day for you as an anchor? Yeah, so I was really excited. Um, I think everyone knows this is kind of what I want to do in the future. And so getting to, especially live, because like Sports Horse is pre-recorded, so it's not as much stress. This is like live real deal. And so I was really um, looking forward to the task and... I loved it. Thought it was fun. I don't know where reporter came from because I am not Boston. I have never been to Boston. My family is not from there. I have like one friend from there. Um, so, <laughs> reporter. Um, I did it earlier in the day too. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. My advice if there's future students watching this is just like read through the teases. And like you said, you know, don't change the facts, obviously, um, but tweak it to how you would say it because it helps it flow more naturally. And then I think that overall just helps a uh, smoother show. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, anybody else wants to? Mackenzie, I know you're tired. It was a, it was a difficult day, but uh, I thought, you know, uh, it was a very well put together, great flow, well put together. There was some, we were both confused because Rundown Creator just wasn't keeping time. We, we couldn't figure out why, but that red clock, the manual way, <laughs> helped us through it. Uh, what were your biggest challenges uh, producing this uh, very complex show because you had different anchors and reporters in different positions. You had Karina out live. You, you had uh, a very nice presentation. And yeah, and you had you know, different ways of presenting content, which uh, were quite tricky as you found out that anything that's live is unpredictable. You can't control it because uh, you know, the live person will go as long as they're going to go. And, you can only assume, but what were, what were the things that you want to share, your takeaways?
people clarify um, exactly what they thought they were going to be doing on screen so it like would make sense in my brain. Um, so I don't think there's ever too much over communication. Um, other than that, I mean, we all rolled with the punches and I feel like good job us on that. Uh, I don't have anything else. It was a great So why don't we talk about a Sojo show? Uh, guys, anything, producers, you want to share? Any concerns you have? Anything, you know, everybody has to pitch in and help out. Do you have every reporter committed to the representative, to host those representatives, to meet them, to give them their personal numbers? How are things, how are the logistics shaping up? Is there something I can help you? something that uh, we need to work on. And then they're all going to probably, hopefully I'll do the same meeting spot so everyone can kind of come back to the That's newsroom together. Yeah. Um, and then we have some great thoughts from everybody that really helped us kind of n narrow down the issues and kind of change one of them up to be more like um, t for what people are like, concerned about in the different counties. So how different and how many issues did you think you had to, to add? There seemed to be some issues that were related when I looked, when yeah. I looked at them. So we um, are kind of, we were still doing three issues, but we are doing infrastructure instead of global conflict because that was a big thing that people were concerned with. They were talking about like um, supporting local businesses mm -hmm. and potholes and roads and we want more sidewalks and all of that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. um, like parking in their different cities or counties. So we decided to make that shift and we still have to get um, more data and make questions for it. But then everything else, I sort of went through today and picked questions for our other two topics, um, and narrowed down some of the data, and then Mackenzie is going to also look over it and put her own spin on things. Yeah, and for um, every criticism, you've got to have the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I, I started you guys just kind of pointing out to you anywhere where, where I could see mm -hmm. we needed the other side of the story. So keep thinking in those ways. Yeah. And I like that you added the infrastructure because when I was looking over, I found that to be a recurring theme. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, have you started the rundown? Have you yes. thought about the format and the style the, of the we've show? We've made a, um, yeah, a rundown. The only thing that I'm kind of confused about, and maybe you can give us like more guidance there, is the end of the show when they're supposed to be working together, all of the commissioners and officials are supposed to be working together to like create a solution. I'm not really sure how we as producers are supposed to like yeah, make well, that work. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Now, since the format, if the format still is three segments, you know, doing one segment, going to break, another segment, going to break, teasing ahead, I'm thinking, and, they, and then you can do whatever you want, but I'm thinking that at the end of every segment, we have to have time for a solution to, you know, whatever the issue is, let's say we, t we pick infrastructure. Our guests hear about, you know, a few sound bites from people, different things that people want to see. And so they maybe give them a chance to say what, you know, how they see the problem and then focus most of the rest of the debate on, so what can we do? Yeah, yeah, well. Yes, please. Oh, oh, I thought you were contributing to. Okay, that's fine. Wonderful. We will start again with a Zoom meeting at 9 a.m., just like we do, all of us, and we will get a report from our producers exactly what the show looks like, where we are in the process. We'll go around and confirm with each one of you that you have done and you are in a good place. Um, and they will let you know what are the little tasks you might have to 
write a pre-show tease, you might have to help with editing sound bites, you might have to help writing leads, uh, coming up with questions, research, uh, whatever we need to do to get that show moving. And then uh, we'll still meet at noon uh, because we all have to be here to see how we're going to rearrange the newsroom, get ideas from everyone. So it's going to be a very active, creative process because we haven't done this before. And um, I have very talented producers, and, but they will need help. And so it's up to you to come to the morning meeting prepared for the things that you need, the things that are strong, that are good, confirming with everybody that everybody's coming and then describing what the show is going to look like, if you have any questions. So it's going to be a regular day, 9 to 6. Um, and each one of you has already a job. And we're going to need all of you to contribute ideas to, um, you know, everybody, even I, am there to help you guys. Uh, so what is the format of the, of the show again? That was a very good question. So you have to think about how... Um, you know, you will end at what, what percentage of each block. So think of the show as 20 minutes. If you take away the breaks, actually the, the amount of time you have in the show is 20 minutes. How much time, if the format is, you have to think of a way to open the show. So it might be opening with some interesting sound bites on the three main issues. Solutions journalism, we have animations for that. So how are you going to grab the viewer right off the top and show them that this is a special show? Um, and how are you going to open it? Yeah. Talk about what the show is, who's going to be here, and then um, also include a few of the uh, VO thoughts of like the top three issues, so like, a, like the, a the best three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coming up, mm -hmm. a discussion. Okay, and, and then, it's got to be really quick, and right. because you don't want to lose the momentum. Mm -hmm. So think of how you're going to do that. And, and then, as for like the rest of the show, we have it split up. So we'll have um, the topic, the data, the question, and then each panelist will have one minute to respond. And then I guess we need to go in and edit it, but give them. I think we'll have time for like three minutes at the end of each uh, topic for, for them to, for a solution. All right. How? Who's going to keep time, and how is that going to work? I was sort of thinking if we could put like a timer on one of these TVs. If we have like the panelists sitting here, they can see how much time they have on one of the TVs. I don't know if that's possible. Okay. Then, there's a manual way of doing this, which uh, I have done at international conferences, or when I have moderated panels mm -hmm. at international conferences, even for the World Health Organization, the World Bank, or the UN, mm -hmm. you've got somebody with a sheet of paper, several sheets, and when it's down to two minutes, you know, two minutes, and then one minute, and then, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of gives people, and you have to explain that to them ahead of time, that that's mm -hmm. how they will, you know, they will be counted down. Anchor needs to watch for that. Mm -hmm. And if the person gets distracted and they're not looking, that's the anchor's, you know, the moderator, the mm -hmm. anchor needs to keep that on track and just say, sorry to interrupt, but we've got just one minute left and we've got to come up with a solution uh, or some kind of a, you know, something that people... So it, let's just have both, but I think, let's see how the digital thing works. But I would rather have the manual thing and somebody really keeping score that way. And yeah, Molly, any, any idea? Please. When you say infrastructure, that's a really broad thing. I'm having a hard time coming up with like questions right now that are like specific enough for someone to get to a solution in like three minutes and secondly 
I don't know these people and necessarily the role they're playing. I know like one or two. If like there was a way that people who are getting these people could like write a quick little summary about them, just because I would want to really be prepared for these like to know their role because like I know one person is like an account or assistant manager of the county, and I kind of know what that means. But like some people, I don't know what their role is or what that means. So maybe if that could also be. And then my other question is um, how. Like, are they directed at all six, or I forget how many people are coming, but are they directed at all of them? Or is it like each county has their own problem? That's for you guys to, problem? that's for you and the producers to decide. Okay, because I didn't know that I was That's when I say, already... what is the style? What is the format? Okay. How is that going to work? I think you'll be directed at everyone. Okay. Um, yes, very important thing, Molly. As an anchor, remember, always direct your question to one specific person. Because if you, direct, if you don't direct it to Mr. So-and-so and Ms. So-and-so, yeah. everybody will start talking over each other. Remember, that's really important. When I have moderated panels, it's really important to have a cheat sheet in front of you. You know me in names. I make sure I have all the people and, and just three bullet points about who they are. I do my own research. I don't rely on other people to do those bullet points for me because when I do my bullet points, I'm learning and I'm figuring out in my brain what can each one of them, what is their strength and what can each one of them contribute. And um, so the cheat sheet with the names and kind of highlight the, I highlight the names because I, I'm name challenged, as you very well know. Uh, and just three bullet points about what they can tell me, because you don't have time in a live event to really look and, and remind yourself very, you've got to really just look at a keyword and, and know immediately, oh, this guy's from Madison County, oh, this yeah. one is from Jackson, and this is their strength. So I highly recommend that cheat sheet. I'm happy to look it over and to give you some advice. Uh, I'll tell you what worked for me. It might not be the same thing because we all have different way of thinking. But I would love to see everything you have. M main questions for each segment, also all on one sheet. I fit it all on one sheet because I don't have. And then I look it over right before air or right before I moderate a panel to just kind of have it fresh in my mind because it's overwhelming. And so I will work with you and because that's... And on the infrastructure question, is it more transportation? Is it actual like streets? Is it... Are these coming from specific counties? So it's not in every county. So how are you going to do? That's a great question. So let's say you've chosen three sound bites from three different counties. You will have to direct those questions to the people from the respective counties. And then think of general questions or like a follow-up from the other two people who don't have people addressing. Just ask them so, you know, what are your thoughts on that? You know, obviously people in other counties are concerned. It must be something that, in general, people are concerned about. You'll see how the conversation goes. Um, somebody will have to give you a countdown where you have to start the solution. And you have to explain as an anchor, and I will be there with you, what is the format once it's been cleared. So if we have 20 minutes, we, let's say, we open the show with one minute, and then we, let's say, we need um, like a minute or 45 seconds introduction of each person. In the beginning of every segment, I think we have to reintroduce people again real briefly. Who are we talking to? And now we have this new issue. So let's think of how many leads and teases and realistically see of those 20 minutes, how, how much of those 20 minutes will be the pre-show tease, introduction to each theme, tease to the next block, 
and then maybe we will be left with, well, let's say 15 minutes for each segment. Let's say I'm making this up. So you have five minutes for each segment, which means really quick introduction of everybody from all the counties. You have to have lower thirds for them to orient the viewers because they, they, will, they won't remember who's who. You have to keep reminding yourself and the viewers. So let's hear now from so-and-so from Madison County. Um, and then, so that means, let's say, two minutes to talk about the problem and then three minutes to kind of come up. So if, if you were to, to come up with a solution, does anybody, first let me ask you a question. I'm making this up, if that's the format. Does any of you in your counties, have you found a solution? And what would you advise if you found a solution? How does it work? What would you advise the others? You might get that, Molly, uh, by one person who will say, oh, yeah, we did that thing with the potholes. and let So let them start the solution and ask the other, go back to the other people and say, so what do you think? Is that something that could work in your county? Let's say the problem with the potholes is in Barrow County, and, and the representative of Jackson County says, oh, we did that. We, we raised this one penny tax, and, and it really worked, and we had this company that gave us a good deal and stuff. And so you turn to the Barrow County representative and say, so what do you think? Could that work? You know, what will it take? Um, I'm totally making this up, but having that cheat sheet will give you the comfort to really listen and respond as much as you can. It's not going to be perfect. Um, and control the conversation. Always address a question to one specific person. Uh, and then uh, be very, uh, very diplomatic and just kind of say, so we've got just one more minute to come up with a solution. So in that final minute, I don't know what is, what's going to happen. But that's the beauty of live discussions. You never know what's going to happen. And you just keep, I ah, love this guy, Bill Nye. Yeah. Yeah. Is this like panel half Republican, half Democrat? Because that's what I did for a lot of my info. Are we not focusing on that at all? Does it matter? I think most of them, of each only Athens could be more Democratic. The rest are very, just, yeah. I was about to say, I just wanted to check because I was like, that was when I gathered the data. I said, this is what, whatever, what's that really reputable data? It's on, they saw it, but I did like, this is what Democrats said, uh, this is what Republicans. No, like, we don't want to divide people. Data. Yeah. Because well, some of them, they like agree. You want to do both sides, like I, if they're talking about health care, you're talking about Governor shall, Brian you know, Kemp has this proposal for yes. Medicaid, but they had a bill, you know, which was, you know, wanted to use federal funds to expand Medicare to more people. Yes. So this is what you, not just like, oh, here's what the Democrats say. It, no, I just, I compiled it both. I just wanted to make sure I was like, you have to give both to sides that? of the story. If they're talking about did, immigration, yeah. then they have a soundbite in which one woman is saying, you know what, I'm an immigrant. I want the process for legal immigrants streamlined because it took me forever to become an immigrant uh, to become a u.s citizen i just wanted to make sure then at that point you need to also present the illegal the pathway you know to for legal immigrants what is the issue with that why aren't you know because there are many agri many people here farmers who rely on immigrant labor they want a path for people to get permits to come and work their farms because they, don't, they can't get enough people. So there are many issues on immigration you need to look at. One of them is illegal immigration, which is what Lakin Riley's, I on that. The, the guy charged, yes. But, but I also other aspects too. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, and what is, yes, and look at the legislature. What was passed on immigration and make sure that you understand what was passed, what wasn't on health care, what was passed, what wasn't on infrastructure, how are they using the funds coming from the federal government. Um, 
there are a lot of federal funds for infrastructure coming, so read up on those and have people help you with them. Uh, does that make, yeah, so look at that, do you have the, the document, the Google Doc with all the thoughts? You will see on the side I put some comments, the other side of the story, and let me know if you have questions about that. But that's how I, I wouldn't say, you know, red, blue, red, blue, 